Hey, it's Robbie here, and this is Frecky Fit Wool. On today's video, I want to talk about habits, what they are, how they're formed, how we can change them, and the whole 21 90 day rule and how that ties into everything. All right, so first of all, I want to apologize if you hear a weird little noise. I have a fan going. It's hot in here. Um, I turned off my window unit air conditioner today trying to make it, and um, it got hot. So uh, I can't have that going because that is way too loud. So I have my little fan going while I record this video. Then, then that window unit is going back on. But yeah, so anyway, how's everybody? Hopefully you all are having a wonderful week so far. It is Tuesday. You're over Monday, so that's good. And for me, that means I'm off. That means I get to make a video for you guys. That makes me happy. So yeah, so anyway, today I want to talk about habits. We all pretty much know what they are. But the actual definition of a habit is a settled or regular tendency or practice, especially one that is hard to give up. Um, another way of looking at it is a habit is a routine of behavior that is repeated regularly. Our subconscious mind stores these repeated behaviors and they are imprinted on our brains. So that kind of broke it down a little bit more, but kind of in layman terms, you do something regularly and your brain stores that as a habit that you want to do. So you don't have to think as hard, it just becomes automatic. So habits typically are automatic behaviors or reactions to what we're doing in life. So like driving to work, you do that pretty regularly. I do that five days a week, some weeks a little bit more, a little weird. But, um, sorry, this shirt is a lot baggier than it used to be, and it keeps distracting me. I shouldn't have worn it today. Um, probably going to change soon. But anyway, so you drive to work regularly. It's, it's a habit. You know how to get there. You don't have to think about it. You just get in your car and go. And it's so much a habit that it's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to you where you're going somewhere else that is a similar route to your work. So say you're going to a grocery store that's near your work. Or like me the other day, going to Walmart that is near my work. And it's such a habit that if you're not consciously thinking about not going to, to work, you might end up there. I uh, did that. I was listening to an audiobook and it was a really exciting moment. And instead of turning left, I turned right. No, reverse that. Instead of turning right, I turned left towards my work instead of turning right towards Walmart. So it's such a habit that my brain subconsciously subconsciously does it and if you're not consciously thinking about it you're gonna do it and that can be applied to everything in our lives that is why starting a weight loss journey can be so hard because for years we have done certain behaviors we have eaten a certain way we have had a certain amount of activity and for me those ways weren't good. I, I'm dropping stuff. Anyway, those ways weren't good. I would overeat. I would eat as a reaction to emotions and stress and pretty much anything. I, I'm typically a little bit more sedentary than I should be. And I've been that way for years. So it's hard to change those. And when you're starting a new as Weight Watchers always likes to call it, it's a lifestyle, not a diet, because this is something you want to do for the rest of your life. So it becomes very, very hard to change your lifestyle, because when you really think about it, it's your lifestyle. That is how you have lived your whole life. And this new way is supposed to be how you're supposed to live the rest of your life. When you actually think about it, that is kind of a huge, huge, huge thing to change the way you live your entire life. It's huge. So it's hard. It's very hard. We've all heard the phrase that habits are hard to break. And they are. They're super hard. That is why there is, you know, the problem with starting a diet and why it typically is so hard for all of us to stick to a new diet plan or a new lifestyle. But guys, it's not impossible. <laughs> so what you have to do is Anytime that you are going to be doing something, you have to make a conscious effort. You have to set daily reminders, sometimes multiple times throughout a day, 
to do a new habit instead of what your brain is subconsciously telling you to do. So instead of reaching for that bag of chips, reach for that bag of grapes or whatever diet plan you're doing. I'm trying to keep this pretty neutral because, you know, grapes still have calories. So so it might not be the best option depending on what plan you're doing. But let's just say you're doing Weight Watchers, doing points plus like I am or carb conscious on eye track bites. Grapes, zero points. Chips, too many. I don't know how many, but too many. So instead of reaching for that, you have to consciously tell yourself and reach for the grapes instead. Saying consciously is important because subconsciously, it's like your brain has two levels. Subconscious, conscious. So subconsciously your brain is like, oh, well, we normally reach for the, the chips. And consciously though, you have to say, no, I'm reaching for the grapes. Is that making sense? I hope it is. Um, but yeah, it's very hard to do, but it is possible. You just have to work hard and consciously think. You have to be aware a lot more often. The thing with habits are there are things that you do when you're not consciously making an effort. You're not consciously being aware. You're subconsciously doing things. A lot of times, I mean, I've been guilty of that where when I smoked cigarettes, I would light one. I would light the next one without even thinking about it because it was just habit. It was just there. So I just grabbed it. Wasn't craving a cigarette. Didn't need any more nicotine in my life, but I was grabbing it. Same with food. A lot of times boredom hunger. That's why boredom hunger is a thing because subconsciously your brain's like, oh, well, let's grab some food because we have done it for so long. But you have to be more aware and you have to focus and tell yourself, no, I'm going to do this instead. And so it is possible. Now, one thing that helped me realize how to make it possible, and so maybe this can help you, is that there is this whole 2190 rule. And basically, the 2190 rule states that, well, it's, it's, been, it's a study. And the, there have been a lot of results from it showing that basically it takes 21 days, three weeks, to form a habit. And so, like, say with starting a diet, I've mentioned numerous times in lots of videos that I would start a diet and two weeks later fall off. Get into the third week, but fall off before I complete it. And that's typically how it would happen. I would do that, fall off, go back to my old habits, eat a bunch, like, all right, let's, let's, we're gonna do it. Make it a, a two, two and a half weeks, fall off. Because I never would get to that three week mark. And sometimes I even would, but I still would fall off. And so like how I kind of look at that is, you know, here's your old habit, your old way of eating. And then after 21 days, you created this new habit, but they're both there. So the 2190 rule states that, you know, after three weeks, this new habit is here, but you, you go to 90 days and it replaces the old habit and it becomes your new lifestyle. So that's the trick to it. You've got to make it that far. But it's kind of cool knowing those numbers because they're a little less overwhelming, especially when you're first starting than the rest of my life. Say, okay, I'm going to try to eat this way for 21 days. That's not hard. That's hard, but it's not impossible. That sounds a lot more plausible than, okay, day one, I am going to make this my new lifestyle today. This is how I'm going to eat the rest of my life. This is how I'm going to be active the rest of my life. That's a little overwhelming. So just set yourself a goal. 21 days, I'm going to eat this way. I'm going to have this level of activity. Anything, not just food. I mean, you can you know apply it to all aspects of your life, but set yourself a goal of 21 days. And then when you reach that 21 days, You've created that habit. It's not your new lifestyle yet, but you've created that habit. So when you get to that point, you're like, all right, let me go a little bit longer. Let me see if I can make it to 90 days. Then you do, and then it's easy. I'm at week 15 now. So Sunday was 105 days, and this is kind of my new lifestyle. I easily reach for better things, better options, better habits, than what I did when I first started or in the first few weeks. And that makes it so much easier, makes it so much more doable. Even today, I'm gonna have a video tomorrow, um, bonus video, where I, because today is a hungry day for me. I woke up hungry 
And when I do that, I'm hungry the rest of the day, no matter what I eat. I could eat an extra large pizza and still be hungry. It's just something that I, my body does, and I don't know why, but it does. And maybe that'll be something I'll look into, and when I find out, I can explain it to you guys. But that's that's hard. But the thing is, my new lifestyle, I, inst- I, I know that I'm hungry, or I know that my body is making me think I'm hungry, but my first reaction is to do all of these other things to not eat. That's my first reaction. I mean, I, I'm eating. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm ha- I had breakfast and all this other stuff that I'm going to be doing. But my first reaction is not to give in to the temptation of being hungry. My first reaction is, okay, today's going to be a little bit more annoying. This is what I'm going to do about it. That is fantastic because 15 weeks ago, that would not have been my reaction. I would start eating and then be like, oh, gosh, what am I doing? Versus now, it's, okay, I know this is the route I want to go. Kind of repeating myself, but I think I'm getting my message through a little bit clearer. All right, so basically, pick something that you want to change, that you want to make your new habit. Smaller portions, reaching for grapes instead of chips, being more active, going for a walk every day. Whatever your goal is, whatever you're struggling with right now, and set yourself a mini goal of three weeks. 21 days. Say, okay, I am going to do this for 21 days. You thinking about it? You you picked what you want to do? Let me know in the comments what you picked, what you want to do. And anyway, do that for 21 days. And then at that 21 days, readdress it and go on to 90 days. Try it, guys. It, It seriously works. I am happy with knowing that information. So yeah, so anyway, that's kind of what I want to talk about. I don't really have anywhere else to go with this stuff, but um, I thought it was very, very interesting, and especially, like I said, looking at past failures uh, as far as going on diets, and yeah, 21 days, it's doable. So yeah, try it. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know how far you are. Are you past the 90 days? Has this become a new lifestyle for you? It's still going to be hard, but has it become a lifestyle where your first reaction is to think about how to overcome these things rather than first reaction being give in and then regret it later? It's not going to be perfect the rest of my life. I mean, I had years and years and years and years and years, like 34 of them. Well, besides like the two years that I was eating proper and healthy. Um, But that's a perfect example, you know. The old habit is still there. It's still deep in your subconscious. You just want to make something else further up in your subconscious. If that makes sense. Hopefully it does. I don't know. It makes sense to me. And I keep getting distracted. This shirt back here. Where where am I? Over here. This guy. Right here. I went to Walmart. That's where I got lost. And that's what made me think of, you know, the habit stuff. Um, The hanger says 3XL. That's the same kind of hoodie that my my red one, my black one, love it. So I didn't even really try that hard. But um, actually, it was really cool. Uh, this lady helped me pick uh, because she would stop by. She was complimenting my hair and my glasses. And she's like, oh, yeah, those hoodies. I love those. And so I held up that one and a green camo one. And I was like, help me pick. And she did. So it was really sweet. And actually, I was really proud of myself for talking to a stranger. I don't do that. I'm very shy but she was very nice, and so I did that. But anyway, this shirt hanging up back here is annoying me because the hanger says 3XL, which I'm proud that I can fit into a 3XL very comfortably because otherwise they're like this shirt where they're a 4X and they're just kind of baggy. But 15 weeks ago, 4X fit, perfect. But yeah, so I was really happy about that. So I grabbed it, I go, I get home. I go to put it on today or last night, and it's a large. While it does fit over my body, it does not fit uh, in a way that is appropriate to walk around in. So now I have the the battle of deciding, do I want to save it for when I get to a large, or do I want to go take it back and get a shirt that I can wear now? I don't, I've never returned anything before. Like, ever. I don't do that. I, especially in my head, I go through this whole inner dialogue of, um, you know, 
I made the mistake. It's my fault because I didn't check the tag on the actual shirt. I just looked at the hanger. And then the whole embarrassing thing of, yeah, um, I want to return this because I'm too fat to fit into it. And that's not the way I should be, guys. I was talking to my friend last night, and she's like, no, take it back. She's like, I've literally taken back stuff because I just changed my mind. Not because there's anything wrong with it. You can take it back. And I shouldn't be thinking about myself as too fat because, like, literally 15 weeks ago, I wouldn't have even fit into the 3XL, so I should be proud of that. And I am proud of that. It's a work in progress. There's a lot going on in here. There's a lot of years of habits, of negative thoughts that have uh, worked their way into my brain that I have to work on changing. So I might take it back. I might actually work up the courage to do that. I might save it for when I get to a size large, because when I get to a size large, they might not have those, because you know how Walmart is, like these random unique things. You, you check a few months later and they don't have them anymore. So yeah. So anyway, sorry. Side note, probably don't care, but if you do, cool. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so if you haven't yet, please like this video. Um, please comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are on habits, or if you are going to set yourself a goal of 21 days, let me know on what that goal is. And if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you know when I post videos because, like I said, sometimes I announce them, sometimes I don't. But I do have a bonus video coming up tomorrow about having a hungry day. And then also next week there will be a collab video that I'm hosting about falling into fall. And that will appear Monday. But you don't have to keep track of it if you hit the little bell. YouTube will let you know. Or if I have a random day when I um, accidentally go live, people showed up because they hit the bell. So if I decide to do that again, accidentally or on purpose, you'll know if you hit that bell. Anyway, have a good day. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys t -t tomorrow when I talk about my hungry day. Yeah.